What's going on, Garage Gang? Matt from Garage MC here. Guys, uh, I picked up a quad just last night. Got it for Emily. This way she has a sport quad to ride. Um, you know, we'll do the usual. We'll do the repairs on it. We'll get it running good. Uh, and then we'll list it for sale while she's riding it. And then we'll pick up another one for her. She understands the uh, circle of life here with quads. So, at least I think she does, or she says she does. Uh, anyway, let's take a look at the quad real quick, guys. If you clicked on this for the uh, replacement of the one-way bearing, which is what is wrong with this 2000 uh, TRX 400EX, um, you know, you can fast forward a little bit for all my normal viewers out. Let's talk about the quad like we normally do uh, before we get to work. Stay tuned. All right, guys, so here it is. 2000 Honda TRX 400EX, Big Bird Edition. Um, it's got some aftermarket wheels on it. It's got decent tires. It has the OEM carburetor, which is uh, one of the, the points that is very important to me when I'm buying one of these. Uh, I don't like when it has a bunch of Chinese stuff on it. Um, for the most part, it's pretty stock, guys. It's got this graphics kit on it. Um, it's got some brush guards. It has a full DMC exhaust. Um, I want to say they're, it's a DMC Alien. I, I'm not... 100% sure with these exhaust guys. I was never in the market for one of these. Um, wheels and tires are pretty nice. They're not matching. Obviously, the black, the front are blacks and uh, the rears are polished. But I have another set of OEM wheels with good tires that we're going to swap on here. Uh, I'm probably not going to do that on video. You guys know how to swap your tires. If you don't, you're probably not interested in quads anyway. Um, it's got a LED light bar in it. They did a pretty decent job. With a piece of diamond plate, it matches the uh, diamond plate and the graphics. Um, the steering stem has a little tweak. This side's a little lower, but you know, you guys know uh, I got other shit here. Extra steering stem right there. It's nice and straight. We'll go ahead and take that out. Uh, not a big deal. It needs the bearing down at the bottom of the uh, steering stem replaced anyway. It's got the tiniest amount of play in it. Rest of the bearings all feel good. Uh, I rode the quad, goes through all of its gears, but it's doing, uh, you know, what it does when you have a bad one-way bearing. Um, I got the oil draining out right now, so I mean I could crank it over real quick and show, eh, I'm not gonna crank it without oil in the bottom end, uh, cause my luck it'll go ahead and fire off right now. But uh, yeah, got a good deal on it guys. It came with this, it came with that extra 04 chassis right there. Uh, came with an extra seat, came with a new one-way bearing, it came with the steering stem bearing, uh, uh, what else came with another manual so you know now I can read a 400x manual in each hand at the same time that's that's good um, other than that guys pretty clean you know frames a little little shitty you know but uh, that ain't nothing but some paint or powder coat whatever it's got these shock guards which I'm not a fan of never was a fan I'm gonna need a battery too I have a few here but I don't know if any of them are good uh, we'll have to you know recondition one of those um, yeah, about that. That's, uh, yeah, there's not really much to say about that. That's going right in the trash. Um, it's got a couple other matching parts up here that are either I'll sand those down smooth and polish them because that's like, you know, this ain't the nineties anymore, but, uh, yeah, decent. So I'm gonna get set up guys and, um, we're gonna have Emily in this video too gonna be handing me tools and uh let's crack out this one-way bearing it's very simple real quick guys before we start doing some work um emily's got some plans for this thing you know some some ideas so i'm gonna let her go ahead and explain it to you guys right now all right well not sure exactly yet but either white or black plastics um swing arm frame maybe black frame pink swing arm um, maybe the A-arms, pink. I don't know. I don't want too much pink, but I definitely want some. What about the hubs, Em? Yes, definitely Pink the hubs. hubs. So guys, black frame, pink swing arm, maybe uh, the, the lower A-arms black, the top one's pink, and pink hubs. White plastics, custom pink seat cover, pink Nerf bar netting with black Nerf bars, black bumper, you know. You guys, you guys know the know the know the game here. I don't know uh, what size the uh, top end is. He uh, said it has a stage two hot cam in it, and by the way, it sounds it's not stock. But uh, all right. So if you guys are here, 
to see the one-way bearing replacement. This is uh, obviously what you got to do. Um, I'm going to do a full oil change on this anyway, but if you're, you know, you, you, I'm just going to say it like that. You should definitely change the oil with everything here. Um, yeah, drain your oil. Here's your oil drain bolt here, guys. There's also one on the bottom of the tank. Take your dipstick out. Um, let your oil drain out. Now's a good time if you just bought a quad to uh, either catch it with a coffee filter or put a paper towel down there and check it out. But I can see by the oil, there's no bearing material in it. Um, I did notice somebody's had split these cases before, which is fine. It's not uncommon. Um, it's actually a good thing. You know, it's a 2000, so it's 23 years old. Naturally, it would have needed something and somebody actually took the time to take care of it. Um, we got our OEM carburetor. Uh, other things I look at when I buy a bike, guys, I like to stand it up, you know, up on its grab bar. This bike had a skid plate on it. Um, if whoever you're buying a bike from, unbolt, take a few minutes, take the skid plate off, guys, and check stuff. Because there's stuff you won't see with it on there, like if the frame is rotted or if the cases have a hole in it or they're leaking. Uh, stuff like that. Next thing you're going to want to check is, you're going to want to, especially on a Honda or any bike, you want to take your seat off. You're going to want to get a good look at your air filter guys to me an air filter is going to tell you everything about how somebody took care of a bike now the guy i got this from had this bike for four years this is one of the dirtiest air filters i have ever seen which you know wasn't happy about but it definitely reflected in my price uh it's a k&n it could be recharged cleaned and recharged um this is this is bad guys like all the all, everything's this is just god only knows how long how old it is but inside the air box is dirty it's just a mess man don't don't not clean your air filter guys you know it'd be like the same as if you were going running and put your hand over your mouth not a good idea um you can see it's never been really clean cleaned before um i like to take my bikes apart and clean them oh this is all dirty it's to be expected it's an all-terrain vehicle but you know definitely one of the main things you want to check, this will tell you a whole lot about the bike. It's kind of like uh, that old saying, you can tell a lot about a guy by the shoes he wears. Same thing right here, man. Guy did not, you know, keep up on his maintenance. The oil did look clean, though, so that's that's a plus. Um, K&Ns are they're good for flow, but they're not the best for uh, keeping out particulates and everything like that. So, you know, definitely going to want to check that stuff out. But, all right, let's get to the one-way bearing. Now, after our oil's drained out and everything, you're going to have 8 mil and 10 mils, all right? We got one 10 millimeter nut that goes on this stud that comes through the stator cover here. Um, you have one, two, three, four 8 millimeter bolts to remove the starter cover. Inside there, you have a gear, a dowel, and a spacer, just like that. They'll also have two dowel pins, locating pins, however you want to call it. Uh, you're going to need gaskets, obviously, to do this. Um, I usually just get the whole complete Tusk gasket kit. Um, you know, it comes with everything you need. I always have extra ones laying around. The only difference is, is if you have like a, a big bore cylinder, the head gasket is different for the larger bore, obviously, than a stock one. Um, so once you take this off, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight mil bolts, and the one 10 millimeter nut that goes on the stud here, like I just said. Now we could pull this off and this has like a magnetic so you're gonna feel a little resistance but you just keep going with it and then I flip this over to the side now inside here we're gonna have another dowel with another gear reduction gear and go ahead and put this to the side with our starter cover so we don't lose any of that um, you're gonna want to put it like on something clean guys but I'm gonna clean all these parts anyway because I got to take all the old gasket material off which is always fun uh, now in here you have a 17 millimeter bolt. You're going to want to remove this and this is where you're going to need your uh, flywheel remover tool because the one-way bearing is bolted to the flywheel right here. So let me get out my other tools. I'll show you guys the flywheel removing tool and we'll pull this puppy off of here and replace the bearing. Put it back together. It's just that simple. Guys, when I'm doing a one-way bearing on the 400EX, uh, I like to crack these six Allen heads free before I remove the flywheel uh, it's just easier it's already you know held down for you uh, I just use an impact gun. these are six millimeter 
Um, just, just zip them real quick. You don't have to pull them all the way out. I just break them free. Uh, now we're going to remove our 17 mil. Uh, you're going to want to do this with a, you know, an impact gun or something like that. You could do it by hand too, but this is just easier. It does it faster than it would allow it to spin free if you were to do it by hand. So this 17 millimeter bolt, once you remove this, if uh, it will ever come out, there we go. You got this really thick washer on the back of this. So that's all there is to that. Now the flywheel remover tool, the one I have is made by Tusk, this right here. This is a M20 by 1.5. You can go to a hardware store and just get a bolt and then just make the end of it flat. But the uh, flywheel here, there's a threaded section. You want to make sure that this is all the way threaded in by hand. There it is, bottomed out. Now we're going to take our same impact gun and we're going to drill this in. Uh, standard, uh, standard thread. So, I forget what size this was. Go ahead and pause that. Am I gonna get a another socket? All right, guys, we're gonna take our uh, socket and just drive this in and get up close here, Emily, so people can see what I'm doing. You're gonna see this push the flywheel away from the engine here as we spin it in, righty tighty, regular thread, just like that, guys. You're gonna want to take your uh, flywheel remover tool out. We'll not be needing this anymore now. Go ahead and put this back in its package for the next one that comes in messed up. And we just take this puppy off here like this. And that's your whole assembly there, guys. This gear should come out of here. It's a little, little stuck. I'm going to tap that with a dead blow and get that free. Also, you should have bearings here. This is a good time. You want to go ahead and inspect these. There's also another spacer here, if you guys can see that. And you want to make sure your keyway is in nice shape, too. These look like they're all good. We're not missing any roller bearings, so those will go back on. No assembly lube is needed since this is oily, as you can see. Um, if you were to put a new one in, you're going to want to put assembly lube in there. Let me go ahead and break this gear off of here, and uh, we'll get to replacing the bearing. I had to pound that one-way bearing off of the OEM gear, which is no good, man. You see that? See the surface here? That should be nice and flat and smooth. Um, this is what happens when you know your one-way bearing is no good, but you keep turning the quad over and over and over and over until it starts. It just wears that all down, man. These tolerances need to be like right in spec. If you guys are wondering what that noise is, I'm getting about 9 million egg corns plopped on me, so be sure to go ahead and give me a thumbs up just because I'm out here taking, uh, taking, taking fire from the enemy known as squirrels anyway um so guys if it, you know you know your quad if you have been trying to start your quad with the one-way bearing shot for a while go ahead and order the one-way bearing kit that comes with a new gear <clears throat> because that stuff needs to be needs to be on point man needs to be on point but all right let me get prepped up guys and we'll start putting this thing back together it's just a reversal of what we did all right, guys, I'm about to put the uh, new one-way bearing on here. I got our new bolts uh, ready and prepped to go with some blue Loctite. A uh, good healthy amount on each one. You could use red. I mean, you know, you don't have to do this super often. Um, the new one-way bearing kit I got came with a new roller bearing, but, you know, it's it's made in a sweatshop. So, you know, Chinese shit. Um, it's, this is what the guy gave me with the quad, so why order another one? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and leave the factory... Uh, needle bearing on there just because it's you know way better quality than the other one so before I do this let me show you guys this stuff so I just showed you how this was all worn down you see the surface area here no no bueno no bueno for my Spanish speaking friends you can see how this one is nice and crispy so obviously that's the one we're gonna use so next step guys this uh, the one-way bearing part here you can see the tapered side and the flat side the flat side goes down onto the flywheel. This thing here we're gonna need in a second. That's what sits in this little section here once we put it on. Uh, we don't need that yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my bolts in, guys. I will uh, double check the manual and if I can find a torque spec, I will put it across the screen here for these six 
six millimeter Allen head bolts. They come in from the other side to hold the one-way bearing to the flywheel. As you can see, the holes are lined up there. And then uh, we'll go ahead and slap this puppy back together and see if we were successful. Real quick guys, before I forget, those six, uh, six millimeter Allen head bolts, they get torqued down to 22 foot pounds as per the climber manual. As we're getting ready to reassemble this now, I just removed all the gasket material. Um, when you guys are doing this, man, don't don't put a cookie wheel on an angle grinder and grind this stuff down to get the gasket off of the mating surfaces. You will damage your cases. I mean, unless you like dealing with leaks all the time and having oil all over your frame and your quad looking like shit, um, yeah, don't don't use a cookie wheel. Tusk sells these. They come in three different sizes. This is the widest one. This is a gasket scraper slash remover tool. Um, it's cheap, man. It comes in a little kit with three of them. Uh, it's right here. You can see the couple different sizes that it comes with. So, you know, every time you scrape it, go ahead and wipe, wipe this blade off in between each time. This way you get a nice, you know, true, true feel. You want to keep it nice and flat on there. Uh, this little bit of residue isn't going to hurt anything. Um, you guys could use, uh, like parts cleaner, contact cleaner, carbon choke cleaner, uh, but spray that on a rag and then wipe it. Don't spray parts cleaner or carb cleaner into your engine because you will wash the oil off of any bearings that it touches, anything like that. Um, but all right, let's start putting this thing back together. So we're gonna make sure we have our needle bearing on here. And then the next item to go on is the gear. So you wanna make sure this little spacer that's back here is up against the crank. That's on there. We didn't even remove that, so we're good. Now the gear, the protrusion part, this part here is gonna face us where we're working, so the left side of the quad. I'm gonna wanna go ahead and slot, if I can, just got my finger stuck. <laughs> I'm gonna wanna go ahead and get that on there. If you're using a new bearing, like I said, go ahead and use uh, some assembly lube. Next thing to go on, guys, we got our flywheel ready to go. Uh, I didn't tighten these down to 22 foot pounds yet, so it'll be the same thing like when I took it apart, how I broke them free before I pulled it off. So let's not forget this piece here. This goes in there. And we're gonna line up this groove here with where the keyway is going. Very, very important, obviously. And we gotta get the bearing around the gear. Sometimes it's, uh, it's a little easier to uh, put it on before or slide it out. Okay, we're going in now. All right, it's giving me an issue. Let me uh, pull this stuff back off real quick, guys. Sometimes, you know, stuff doesn't just fall together for you. It'd be nice in a perfect world, but it just doesn't. We'll go ahead and get this on there. Make sure our little spacer's in there. Get this going in the one-way bearing. Any of you guys know why it's called a one-way bearing? Feel free to go ahead and drop that in the comments. There we go. Now we're on. So one-way meaning it spins this way freely, but doesn't the other. So go ahead and give yourself a cookie if you guessed that right. Same deal here. Make sure our keyway slot is lined up with the keyway. All right, we're back together, guys. We're gonna go ahead and put our 17 millimeter bolt with the thick washer back in, make sure we have no anything on there. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put a drop of blue Loctite on this, even though you really, really don't need it, but you know, why not while we're in here? We'll go ahead and get this threaded in. I will Go ahead and double check the manual and give you guys the torque spec on this. I can't remember everything as much as I like to think I can. So let me go ahead and get this set down. We'll pick back up. I'll tell you the torque specs and go on to the next part. All right, guys, this 17 mil that gets torqued down to 94 foot pounds. 94. Any way you can hold back on it, feel, you know, it, it's not the easiest thing, but. All right, we got a new gasket, guys. I usually use Tusk, but this uh, was a Moose uh, gasket kit that I had. Um, I take Maxima waterproof grease, and I just stick my fingers in there, and then I rub grease all the way around it. This way, next time, uh, whether it be me or somebody else, I got to take this apart. Um, you know, the gasket isn't stuck to it like that. Plus, 
it, it kind of creates a, a sealing effect when you put grease on it. You know, I'm sure you guys can imagine what I'm saying. Also have our two dowel pins, the one up here and the one down here. They have, uh, I cleaned those off and wiped them down with uh, some Permatex anti-seize. This way, you know, they're not seized next time. So, go ahead and get the gasket on our dowel up here and the one down here. And now that is where it's supposed to go. Um, something I'm going to do real quick off camera, guys. From this old bearing getting all shaved down and just wasted in there. You guys can see all these... Uh, all this little metal like hairs and stuff all stuck to everything I'm going to uh, spray this down in here and get you know as much as I can out um, I mean what I am gonna do uh, we're gonna put cheap oil and a cheap oil filter in it first run it for about you know maybe two hours we'll put on it I'm, I gotta throw an hour meter on the quad it's always good to have an hour meter man uh, you know when to service your air filter how much times on your oil all that good stuff uh, Hour meters are cheap guys. You can get them for like eight dollars on eBay. I mean why not do it? Um, what was I gonna say? So yeah, we're gonna ride it for two hours with some you know cheaper oil uh, You guys know me. I'm a fan of OEM stuff uh, OEM oil and everything too, but uh, we're gonna run it with some cheaper stuff first any 10w40 any conventional um, oil. I usually run conventional. I don't really do the whole synthetic thing. I don't mind changing my oil more frequently. I, you know, it's good for the bike. Uh, so anyway, yeah, I'm going to clean that stator cover up on the inside and then we'll pick back up when we're putting this on. We'll put all our bolts in. I'll give you the torque specs for all that stuff too. And uh, we'll see if we had success with getting this thing started up. Got to figure out what I'm doing with that battery too because that thing is weak. But it should be good enough to get a first fire. So let me clean that up, pick back up. All right, guys, so before we put our clutch cover back on, um, we got to put our reduction gear in. So we're going to make sure this is nice and clean. There's no debris on it. Usually what I'll do is the smaller par portion of the reduction gear here goes on the new gear that we just installed. So we'll get that in there just like so. And we'll put our dowel in that it rotates on, spins on. Now we are ready to put the stator cover back on, guys. You have an O-ring up here on the starter. So remember, it's got to go around that too. Um, so if you feel a little resistance, don't, don't force it because if you roll that seal up there, I mean, you won't really get an oil leak, um, but it could definitely allow water to uh, intrude into your engine which is no good. So we're gonna make sure we got our starter shaft going through the upper hole up there. And this um, stud here has to go through this hole. We'll get that lined up and then we just gotta be, you see how the magnet took it? Look. Just like that. It's not super strong, but it will give you a little resistance. Make sure we're on our dowels nice and good. Which it's giving me a problem like usual. Damn thing. Uh, dead blow, guys. Not a friggin' eight foot long, 50 pound sledgehammer. Make sure we're on our dowels good. I didn't put new dowels in there, so that one was a little chewed up, but you know, it works for now. Um, starter cover, I still have to uh, strip our gasket material off here which I'll take care of off camera but I'll show you guys you want to make sure you have your dowels in there I'm gonna pull these out and put anti seize on those as well um, this gear here you see how this is it's exactly how it was in the engine so we're gonna go ahead and pull this off this goes in there like this make sure you're in all the way new gasket obviously just like we did for the stator and then this goes on and then you just replace all your bolts, man. It's very simple, guys. Uh, you do not need to take your bike to a shop like this. But if you are going to take it to a shop, take it to a local shop, man. Support your local your local uh, people, you know. Try and help keep some people alive. Uh, also, while we're on that topic, um, I bumped into a subscriber yesterday when I was riding out into a pit. Or in a pit yesterday. I was out <laughs> shopping for a couple quads and test riding a few and this and that. And uh, he has a 1990 LT250R. 
His name's David. I'm going to put his uh, YouTube channel across the screen here. So go over and check him out, man. Young Buck, down in his, uh, in his early teens. Doesn't have his driver's license yet, but he's on YouTube doing this stuff, you know. So go check him out, man. Go throw him a subscribe. Check out his video and definitely drop a comment and let him know that Matt from Garage MC sent you. David, nice meeting you, bro. I hope you get that LT working, running pretty good. I let him ride mine, um, you know, for a little bit, a couple minutes. But, uh, yeah, check out his channel. And uh, I also have uh, some other shout-outs that I want to do towards the end of the video and a little bit of information about my stolen Raptor 700 that got stolen over a week ago. Um, not going to be giving too many details out, but I'll let you guys know where we stand at the moment because uh, I'm hot on the trail of that. So if the person that stole my quad is watching, I'll see you soon. Um, yeah, so be sure to stay tuned for the end, guys. And uh, I do the shout outs and everything. Also want to let you guys know that uh, Dave Moore, two stroke legend since 1985, mainly with the 250R Hondas, the ATC and TRX. Um, he's got a YouTube channel. It's his name, Dave Moore, D-A-V-E-M-O-O-R-E. -E. Check out his channel, man. He's got some, like, really in-depth videos about two-strokes and everything like that, man. You guys definitely want to check that out. It's a, a wealth of knowledge that would take years to acquire, and he's trying to share it with everyone. So be sure to check his channel out for sure, and drop a comment there, too. Let him know Garage MC sent you. All right, guys, we are all back together. Um... As far as the 8 and 10 mils go for this, guys, <clears throat> I could sit here and, you know, sound like some torque Nazi and all that stuff. I do them by hand, um, usually all the friggin' time. As long as you clean your surfaces good and you got a good feel for it, use a small ratchet. But, I mean, if you're not familiar and you don't do this all the time, definitely use a torque wrench. Uh, a good rule of thumb with 8 millimeters on a Honda is anywhere from 88 to 106 inch pounds, not foot pounds, inch pounds. You will strip these aluminum threads out very easily. Uh, I put a new OEM filter in it. Um, I put some Bellray thumper, uh, one and a half quarts. Uh, there's no fuel in the quad, so I gotta put gas in it and I have the battery on the charger right now. Uh, I threw an extra brand new K&N that I had in there because that one there, yeah, it can be cleaned, but you know, it, it, that was plugged. So let me get out some gas, guys. We're going to put some 93 in this thing. And uh, let's see if she fires off, man. Stay tuned. Let's get some gas in this thing, guys. My phone is blowing up. Phone never blows up unless I'm busy doing something. I'll be sitting in my room and not one person will call or text me. And as soon as I start doing something, it is like game on. So... We make sure we have our not mixed gas. We don't want to go putting the, the blue Raz Kool Aid in this thing. And then she'll definitely smoke. I want to go putting two stroke fuel in there. Right. Put a little bit of gas in here. I don't want to put too much in because I'm going to have to drain it back out anyway because I want to go through the carburetor and stuff on this. Um, the guy that was selling it had a video up of it running, so, you know, I'm pretty sure it's going to run. You know, it's not some, like, miracle thing here, guys. We just put a one-way bearing in. So, not trying to look like a hero or some crazy shit like other YouTubers try to do. You know? Pull the wire and make it look like something doesn't run, and then all of a sudden they're magicians, and it freaking fires right up. But, we should be good to go, and we can check for leaks and all that stuff here. So, let's see if our one-way bearing did the trick. I said we're going to have to order a new battery. That one won't really do much. Um, it's got a Chinese key in it. I don't like that. We're going to order a new one. But uh, let's get it. Good, but it might need a little bit. 
We don't have any smoke coming out. Everything seems good so far, guys. Good man, sounds real good. Let's check out our light here. If it will turn on. There we go. Nice LED, should be nice and bright out in the trails. See anything leaking anywhere, so we're good man. All right guys, let me clean up and then I'll piece you out. Alright guys, so that's going to do it for today's video. Just a quick one-way bearing swap out. Um, I just rode the quad, man. It's might be a little too ballsy for Emily, oh, honestly. <laughs> might 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 be a little too too much for her. But uh, maybe we'll get a TRX 90 thumb throttle and, you know, we'll govern it for her or something, you know. Um, yeah, so anyway, guys, thank you for watching today's video. Um... Any uh, uh, big shout out to a bunch of you guys, man. Everybody that dropped comments about my stolen Raptor, man. I appreciate all you guys. Um, even if I don't get the bike back, it's just nice to see everybody in the community come together. Um, huge, huge shout out to Mike Sabo. Um, obviously, if you guys are watching my channel, you know who Mike Sabo is, man. He actually like called me personally and put the post out for me on his channel and everything, man. Huge thanks to Mike. Uh, Definitely, you, you got the any favor card from me anytime, anywhere, I'll be there. Um, yeah, man. Uh, I said I was going to let you guys know some details. I got, I think, I, I, I think I'm going to find my bike. So, um, reward is still out there. If somebody finds it before me and returns it to me in one piece, um, probably not going to happen. I'm going to end up getting it on my own. So, like I said, if the guy that stole my quad is watching my videos, I'll see you soon, bro. Um, because I'm fucking coming. Um, yeah, that's it for today's video, man. Don't forget to check out Dave Moore's YouTube and my boy David's YouTube. Um, like I said, Dave's a young buck out there working on quads and stuff. So, I will, uh, put his name of his channel across the screen again here, again. And I'll put Dave Moore's as well. Be sure to check him out, especially if you're into two strokes, man. You really, you'd be hard pressed to find somebody that knows more knowledge and knows how to win races with engines that he knows how to build and everything. So um, be sure to check that out. Very technical. So um, that's, you know, what you need. But anyway, thank you guys for checking out today's video. Um, we'll go ahead and end it with Emily sitting on a quad. And I'll see you guys in the garage next time. What you think, Em? I like it, baby. You like it, huh? I do, I love it. I think it's too much for you. Mm -hmm. We're gonna have to strip that exhaust and that stage two hot cam out of there and put some stock shit on it for you. Okay, you know, can't have a pink quad being faster than my quad, that's for damn sure. <laughs> we ain't gonna let that happen, gentlemen. Nope. We ain't gonna let that happen. <laughs> but anyway, I'll see you guys next time, man. <laughs> One more time. Peace! Don't forget to like and subscribe, too. And I read and answer every single one of my comments personally. I don't just hit you with a thumbs up.